Welcome back. Oh my goodness, it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. Action-packed conversations. Uh, I um, I wanted to just take a few minutes to kind of go over what I heard today. Uh, please feel free to put in uh, some of your uh, most poignant uh, learnings from the day in the chat. We started off uh, centering and grounding ourselves. Uh, and then we were met with Dr. Eloisa uh, Clementic, who talked about inclusion being this intentional equity driven uh, body of teamwork that needs to happen and how they're showing those impacts and pathways for entrepreneurs of color and women and youth in Chicago. I mean, I'm sorry, in Atlanta. We talked about what the role of art is in undoing racism, that was a wonderful conversation. Like how do we resource artists as the R&D arm of culture and how to influence city planning, policy and so forth. Erica Alexander reminded us that representation matters in the arts, Sarah Eagleheart uh, did as well, how stories matter and they have impacts beyond the arts. Uh, Sarah reminded us that uh, part of, um, the change has to include indigenous people. Like we have to have visibility across plat platforms so that we're able to see indigenous folks uh, and understand who they are. Um, there was a conversation about uh, the structures of organization and folks influencing people of color to go into the nonprofit industry, not just uh, because part of, because of de devaluing the work of people of color and that people of color were brought here, and I will not forget this uh, tagline, uh, people of color, particularly African people, Black people were brought here to rock your world, world and make your planets twirl. Uh, that has got to be one of the best quotes of the day. Um, stories, we were reminded, are needed for healing. They are reparative, they are restorative, and they're sustainable. Sharice reminded us, uh, talked to us a little bit about how we uh, move to access uh, and what she pointed out was that we need to understand that there's a lack of availability and scale of local equity capital providers, right? And that they're mismatched. There's a mismatch uh, in terms of products uh, in ter and uh, looking at how families and friends are able to invest in businesses that they care about. And so she named some solutions. Again, we're solution focused. And she said, we need multiple equity uh, capital sources. We need to expand the focus and product alignment and we need a greater representation of color amongst general partners. Um, but most importantly, I think uh, she named and lifted, and this has been a theme that has shown up across the different uh, uh, breakout sessions as well, that there is a need for a mind shift so that we can see people of color, not as a social problem, but as a business opportunity. Deborah Schwartz, Keisha Cash, and Deshaun Amira talked about looking at uh, businesses or as a business owner, not look, not just looking at extraction, but how do you provide value to entrepreneurs, increasing their, their incomes? And how do we get more capital to founders of color? There was a conversation about catalytic capital and, and impact investment. Can't just be about profit only, but it, it, it is aiming towards justice, right? And so holding on to this notion that impact and generating profit and returns are not exclusively, are mutually exclusive, but they go hand in hand. And then the sessions, oh my goodness, I had a chance to bounce around to all three of them. They were amazing. The capital allocators reminded us that policy is the hitting X factor, and we have to really fundamentally deal with white supremacy in institutions so that um, we create spaces where uh, we're not only looking at financial capital, but social capital is also necessary and that everyone on the block has a, has a role to play in that. In terms of enterprises, we, we, we thought about and heard from the folks that there's, there's this fear and uninformed capital um, of investors that needs to be uh, educated. And so how do we educate investors of color to make educated decisions around the return on investments that they want to see. There was a call for ecosystem builders and more of them to ease investors into building relationships and educating uh, these, these entrepreneurs or these investors. We went over to the innovators and again that thread of community is breaking through. Community is the biggest innovator and accelerator. 
So we know what the data is, we know what the problems are, are but how do we take what has happened in COVID-19 where we've afforded these new spaces for quick responses and how do we bake those into some of the long-term ideas or long-term solutions? We know that how we support community and collaborate with community is the base. And so how do we support communities in keeping money and, uh, and revenues generating in their community so that they're willing and able to spend uh, inside of their community? And then how do we create the kinds of solutions that are generational? Those are important as we think about our work uh, together. So our day isn't over. Uh, we've had an action-packed day. Um, I hope that you are as uh, rejuvenated and energized as I am listening to the different conversations and all of the wonderful work that is happening across the country in this space. We have three post-conference opportunities uh, for you to engage in that all begin at 3.30. The first is uh, the Civic Dinners. In partnership with Civic Dinners, Spectrum presents Spectrum Virtual Lounge that is creating space to explore racial equity in the context of today's uh, environment and, and to have a constructive dialogue about change. So you'll have to leave this platform in order to participate in the Civic Dinners. You wanna go to www.civicdinners.com forward slash SOCAP. I think someone's dropping that into the chat right mm -hmm. now. The second opportunity mm -hmm. is the art of providing joy. It's a baking demonstration from Goody Box Bake Shop with owner and founder, Carrie Spindler. So grab your children, your fur baby, and an apron for this baking demonstration. And there will be a recipe that will be shared with you to, to, to try at home. At three o'clock, not 3.30, at three o'clock, there will be uh, the Game Changers Entrepreneurs Creating Impact session uh, with Joey Womack and Sarah Sterling. They're going to be teeing up the Entrepreneurs Showcase that's going to happen at 3.30. Mm -hmm. And it's an exclusive opportunity to meet and hear stories of the inaugural cohort of Spectrum mm -hmm. Scholarship Entrepreneurs from across the United States. They will be up in a bit to share a little bit more with you. And then fourth, you can also start your own session uh, to dig deeper in any of those areas that grabbed your attention today. So connect with uh, folks in the People's tab and use the Sessions tab on the left to make that end of day session happen. While today we were focused on inclusion, you won't wanna miss tomorrow where we'll shift our attention uh, uh, to impact. Uh, we have a wonderful lineup of, of lightning bolt speakers and panelists. And before I turn it over to Joey, uh, I want to make sure that we give special thanks to our supporters and network partners, Chicago Beyond, John, John D. And, and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, Propel Capital, Prudential, W.K. Kellogg Foundation, and thanks to our speakers, presenters, hosts, and all of you for joining us. We'll start up again tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Now, welcome to the stage, Joey Womack and Sarah Sterling. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I wanted to turn it over to you all to uh, prep uh, this session uh, and the meet and greet that's going to happen with entrepreneurs. Perfect. Thank you, Nadia. Um, hello, everyone. I am the Entre Scholarship Entrepreneur Coordinator for SOCAP, um, which uh, during the flagship conference of SOCAP, which happens in the fall, I would run our scholarship program for about 100 and for the first time this year, we have created in partnership with Joey Womack, uh, the Spectrum Virtual Scholarship Entrepreneur Opportunity, which focuses on supporting entrepreneurs of color in the United States. Um, and we're joined here, Nadia mentioned already, Joey Womack from Goody Nation. And we're so happy to have him be part of both creating and mentoring the entrepreneurs and guiding us through this process of how to best support them um, both before, during, and after the Spectrum Conference. A few moments to introduce yourself. Sure, sure. Sorry, I kind of had a slight delay. So, hey, everyone, I am Joey Womack, founder of, of Goody Nation. Um, it's my life's purpose to help <clears throat> 1 billion people by the year 2039. I'm, I'm super serious about it. Um, 
a year ago, I, I stood on stage at Spectrum in, in Atlanta and talked about in building an intentional culture. And here we are a year later with actionable steps and, and making that that happen. I'm, I'm super appreciative of the opportunity. Uh, I'm going a little bit into my work. Uh, I'll go, go into my work a little bit later on, but I'll kick it back to Sarah for more context. I just want to thank you for being a Spectrum supporter, an advisor, a speaker, and now helping us to launch this scholarship program for Spectrum. Uh, you, you've had your own accelerator. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, that work and give us some insight before we kick it back to Sarah? Sure, sure. So um, the flagship program for Goody Nation is called uh, the Intention Good Project. And so what we see typically for diverse list startups and also social impact startups, particularly here in Atlanta, but really all across the, the nation is that they receive funding about two venture investment levels lower than where their progress indicates. And so for context, if they're raising a, a seed round, they're, they're really, uh, or they're trying to raise a seed round, they have all the milestones for it. They're actually only getting money at the angel level. And that's just, it's sad, quite honestly, and it's difficult to look at for some of these founders. And so um, our way of kind of filling that gap is to connect those startups to uh, influencers for endorsements or key advisor roles to large companies for either uh, paid pilots or partnerships and also to investors where, where it really makes sense. And so essentially we are using social capital or we're helping to build social capital by, by filling uh, the, the trust gap, so to speak. And so in the last year, really, you know, literally, you know, I think what, maybe three weeks after Spectrum in Atlanta, we started the work. And in the last 12 months, we have um, helped out 60 startups. We have 60 startups in the pipeline. They've raised over $3 million so far, and they have um, pilots with Delta and Home Depot and MailChimp. And so we're super excited for where we go next, both taking uh, the Atlanta startups and connecting them with awesome people nationally but also taking national startups or startups outside of Atlanta and then bringing them or connecting them to resources here in the Atlanta startup ecosystem. Thank you so much. Sarah, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the entrepreneur program uh, process. Yeah, definitely. So historically, SOCAP has offered um, a scholarships to entrepreneurs from all over the globe to help them attend our in-person event um, that happens every fall, the flagship event of SOCAP. Um, this is the first time that we're doing a scholarship process for entrepreneurs for Spectrum, but I want to give a little bit of history about the scholarship process in general. Um, the scholarship has been set up ever since the beginning to provide additional support for entrepreneurs. As some of you who have been to the flagship conference of SOCAP know, it can be a really overwhelming experience to be placed at Fort Mason Center with 3,000 other people and try to connect with potential funders and partners. And so we wanted to create a space for them that really sets them up for success and, and also provides them a spotlight during the event so they can stand out from the crowd. Um, as well as an entire day of programming. During SOCAP, we actually have a whole day event specifically for the scholarship entrepreneurs who come from all over the globe um, called the Impact Accelerator Day. And we invite guest speakers that have different platforms of, and support for them. And it also gives them a chance to network with one another and get to know one another. And actually we've had a lot of strategic partnerships that have been created even between entrepreneurs themselves that are in the same sort of industries, especially one that comes to mind are sanitary pads, ecological sanitary pads. Um, an entrepreneur from Asia partnered with an entrepreneur in, I believe, Kenya, uh, formally right after SOCAP. So we've, we've seen a lot of success with that. Um, with the Spectrum scho Scholarship, since this is the first year we've done it and it's a virtual event, it's been a very different process and we've been trying to be very intentional about that, but I can go into that in more depth in a second. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about this. I mean, this is wonderful work um, to both of you. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about who you've been collaborating with. Like, how have you pulled these entrepreneurs together? Mm -hmm. So, Joey, you want me to take it or you want to take it? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I can, you know, I think in terms of the sourcing, the recruiting, the, the founders, I mean, 
with us in the, the Intention Go project, we have a list of, of founders we kind of keep a track, uh, keep an eye on, and, and track their progress. And so, email and several messages, and, and including some threats to sign up or apply, um, we're we're given as well as using um, LinkedIn and social media, and also using our network of of awesome people throughout the country to uh, to activate their own networks to find startups. This question is to both of you. I wonder, is there any for the entrepreneurs that are in the in the fellowship? Are they from particular industries and the same for you, Joey, are you looking across particular industries or issue areas or sectors? Yeah, so for this specific scholarship for Spectrum, we focus on entrepreneurs of color operating within the United States. So even if they have some sort of process that exists outside of the, U the US, especially for like the food industry, as long as they're operating and selling their products and services within the US, they applied and were qualified for the scholarship from, from California all the way to DC and New York. Uh, we have 35 entrepreneurs in this initial cohort. And for the entrepreneur sessions, which I'll get to in a second, which are happening later today, we did break them down and divide them by different sectors, which I can go into in a second. Um, but the actual application was open to entrepreneurs in any sector and specifically entrepreneurs that are at a stage where they're looking for some sort of an investment. And it can be their first time looking for investment and to engage with investors. Um, but what we're trying to do through this program is provide support for them and opportunities for them to connect with investors. And that includes uh, having a partnership with Village Capital. They have a platform called Abaca. So the entrepreneurs have been able to access Abaca for free and input their information. And there they're able to connect with investors. And I know Joey's used that with his entrepreneurs as well. And it's been a hugely successful application. We've also been working with uh, MacArthur. And so we've, we have created outside external strategic partnerships to help support this program. Um, we've also done a series of webinars um, to orient the entrepreneurs, both in storytelling, how to use the actual Abaca platform, how to use Hopin, because this is the first time we've done this conference virtually, to make sure that they are they feel completely prepared and secure for the sessions that are coming up um, in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I give a plus one again to Village Capital. The, the Applica tool is a complete game changer. And so I've been blessed to have the opportunity to, to, to work with Village Capital for over two years now. And so um, there's no visual for it, but, there, but the Applica tool is a chart essentially that allows both entrepreneurs, investors, and even mentors and other people in the ecosystem to truly understand where a startup sits today, essentially the milestones they've reached across eight different business categories, everything from the, the team, the problem, the value proposition, the milestones relative to the product, the market, um, their business model and investor exit. And so it also is broken down according to the, to the levels of funding at which the founders are seeking. So these are called venture investment levels. And so what we often see is that in the past, there's been this huge mismatch between the type of funding or the type of investors that entrepreneurs seek um, but where the entrepreneur actually sits. So they may actually um, reach milestones, quote unquote, that qualify them for angel level, but they're going for a series A. And so that means they, they barely have anything down on paper. Maybe their team isn't filled out, so on and so forth. And so oftentimes when founders go to investors and they're told no, they have no idea why, right? This chart, and I think it's applicable to maybe 90% of all investors really shows the entrepreneur where they sit. And so what we've seen, I think Village Capital has seen as well, is the greatest predictor of success for, for a startup founder is their self-awareness. Or said very simply, where they assess themselves on that chart versus where an external person or a third party assesses themselves. I mean, assesses that same startup. And so the lower that the difference is, the higher the likelihood the founder is going to be successful. Have any outcome uh, from that assessment? How, to what extent are folks using it? To what extent is it changing the way that the, the businesses are being invested in? Yeah, I mean, I can go from what we learned in the last 12 years of doing it. So it's like 12 months, excuse me. <laughs> it feels like 12 years. Um, in the last 12 months, I think we've had over 200 companies um, fill out their rubric. Uh, I can tell you that what's clear is that the majority of, of, our, of our founders, both, again, diverse led and also social impact startups, the, 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 the three weakest areas are around essentially 
understanding how to scale their problem across multiple markets. And so when you look at the chart and you see they score high in team, they understand their problem, they understand their value proposition, but the market and then the investor exit like category um, is, are, are, are lower really across the board. It really gives entrepreneurs and us as entrepreneur support program operators uh, areas to focus on for their improvement. And so then we set OKRs for them to improve over 60 to 90 days. Once they level up essentially and reach the milestones for the, the investment they seek, then we can start to make introductions. And that's how tactically we got a lot of those companies to over $3 million in investment in, in 12 months. Incredibly impressive. $3 million in 12 months. That's awesome. Sarah, can I turn my attention back to you um, around the industry piece? Um, do the entrepreneurs come from a particular industry? And tell us a little bit more about what folks will experience in just a few minutes uh, in the next session. Yeah, so I welcome everyone who's watching or about to join us uh, later for the sessions in the afternoon to come and actually participate in the Entrepreneur Showcase. So this is a space um, that we've created that's available to anyone that is on Hopin to participate and engage with the entrepreneurs. And we've made it a really special, um, more holistic approach besides just a basic pitch session. The entrepreneurs have <laughs> pulled together in just a week, and I really want to recognize their effort in be to pivot and, and respond and create the materials necessary for their pitches um, in such a short period of time, but they've actually created their own stories. So they're actually videos that we'll be showing of each of the enterprises about the stories of how they've developed as entrepreneurs, their challenges, their innovations, as well as about their business and the specific challenge that they're addressing. Um, whether that is uh, creating more open, sustainable markets or online platforms that are more inclusive to LGBTQ communities or um, sustainable fashion or empowering women and girls that are going through puberty, these entrepreneurs have been picked from a very large cohort of applicants um, to, sh to showcase their innovations. Um, then we will be giving them time to really talk about their actual business models, their investment ask so that investors and other people who might be interested in engaging with them further after the sessions get that information. And then there will be an open question and answer session that will be facilitated. They are broken into uh, sectors. So we have seven different groups. There's agriculture and environment, apparel, community development, economic development, education, health, and then prototype and startup. So depending on your interest for those people who are listening in, um, feel free to bounce around and, and see the different groups. If anyone is interested in actually engaging one-on-one -on -one with the entrepreneurs and you're not an abaca or you're not necessarily an investor, but you want to learn more information, we did create an investor lookbook that I would be more than happy to share with anyone who's interested. And you can email me at Sarah with an H at socialcapitalmarkets.net. Um, and I'd be more than happy to connect you with any of the entrepreneurs. Erling, Joey, Mike, thank you so much for teeing up uh, Game Changers that will be happening at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. All you need to do is click on the left in the, at the sessions tab. So we look forward to seeing you there. For the rest of you, we'll check, it, we'll check out and we'll see you in the morning. Thank you so much for joining today. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, you guys in Miami.